Hey everybody, welcome. My name is Caleb. In this video, we're going to talk about the importance of pull requests, as well as what they are and how they work, because maybe you are new and you're not entirely sure what a pull request is. You hear the word thrown around a lot, but not entirely sure how to use them properly. All right, so the whole idea with a pull request is that if you have some source code for a project and you want to make a change to that source code, you don't just go in and make the change you request that a change is pulled into the main code. This gives the people that maintain the project the ability to review your changes and see if it's something they actually want to merge in with the code. Now, this is obviously something you can do if there's a project out there that's open source and you want to make a change, but you can also do it for your very own projects. You can make a pull request for yourself. Why would you possibly want to do that when you could just go in and make the change directly? You see, if you have right permissions, you don't need to ask anybody permission to make changes. However, creating a pull request for yourself can actually help you review your changes and help reduce mistakes. So something that I'm a fan of when it comes to software development is continuous delivery, the ability to push a code change to a source code repository and automatically take the new code and deploy it to a web page so that people can see it without having to wait or do any custom deployments. This can all be automated and it's very easy, but it introduces a big issue and that is you could make a change, commit it, that gets propagated live and you didn't realize it actually had a mistake or a bug. So one way to help reduce this besides you know, having some extra steps in your deployment process, is to actually work with pull requests. And that'll allow you to review those changes in more detail before you deploy them out live. So to see an example of this, I'm working in a project, and what I can do is I can say git branch dev. And now when I say git branch, you can see I'm currently on the main branch, but there is this branch dev. So I can say git checkout dev, I can make changes on this branch. So we can go in, let's just say I create a new file. We'll just call it conclusion.md, doesn't really matter. And here is a basic conclusion. Thank you for reading this documentation. Doesn't really matter what it is, this is just a simple example. But let's say I mess this up and you know my keyboard breaks, but I don't really notice that change. Well, what I'll do is I'll git add and commit this to that dev branch, add a conclusion, and then I'll say git push origin dev. So there's two things I'm doing here that help reduce errors. I'm developing on a branch, so that way I don't just have the main branch always be so hot with new commits. There's a few extra steps. And now I'm going to do a pull request instead of just automatically merging these so that not only could I review it, but I could have someone else review this code change, which is probably a good idea if you're wanting to build an open source project, maybe have a community of people willing to review that code. So here is the repo up on GitHub, and that new change I made did not yet make it to the main source code. Instead, it's in a branch, so that's a little bit safer. And what we can do is we can create a pull request if we wish, where I can basically give a summary of what changes I've made, and ideally, a screenshot showing that they work. That way, you know, I actually visually confirmed that the changes were correct, and we'll just say it works. Trust me, bro. Let's go ahead and create this pull request. And to summarize this pull request, we are pulling in the dev branch into main. Create pull request. Now, I'm just working by myself here, but if I wasn't, I could assign a person. So I could assign a person to review this. I think this assignee is the person working on it and the reviewer would be someone who needs to check to make sure it's actually working properly. So they could do it locally or just take a look at your code. So what they can do is go into the commits and see what was actually changed. So add a conclusion. They added this file, conclusion.md, and they'll be like, whoa, 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 what is up with this? Why so many N? Please fix. All right, and then they can start a review. And then once I'm done making my review, I can go ahead and submit my review. So as the reviewer, the person working on this code is going to see my comment and can reply or resolve the conversation once it is fixed. So the next question is how does 
someone make a change to an existing pull request. So inside of the code, let's go ahead and fix that issue like so. Save, we'll say git add, git commit, fixed, which by the way, you can use the source control tab in Visual Studio Code to see pending changes, which is a great way to prevent these kind of errors. So we'll commit that, git push origin dev, and now you can see there's two commits here and we see fixed. So we'll go into fixed. Wow, that looks better. Looks good to me. I'm ready to merge this. Let's go back to the pull request and scroll down, merge pull request and confirm merge. So it's just a little bit more of a process before the code gets added into main, which now you should be able to see it here. One minute ago, fixed. Now, if you do have a code pipeline, it'll take that new change from the main branch and start that build process. Now, if you wanna be extra safe, you can make it so that the build requires a manual build. It'll still automate all the processing, like you don't have to type in the build command and upload the files to S3, but it's not gonna do that unless you initiate that build, either on a schedule or manually, if you feel necessary to do that, which also, is another layer safer. Let's say your GitHub gets compromised, someone makes some crazy change, that new commit doesn't automatically propagate to your live website unless you manually deploy it. So that is my quick summary of pull requests. I think they can be pretty handy. They're not quite as handy when you're working by yourself, um, but in a small team, they can definitely be handy. And if you really want to make sure your code is solid, Find a few people to review your code and any of your major changes, do them on a dev branch or a feature branch, and then make a pull request that requires a review. Hopefully this was a good tip on some software principles. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more backend development stuff. I'm working on a backend development course and you can get early access to the notes. I left a link down in the pinned comment for you. Here is basically a way to see the progress on the course live and we're going to add a lot of cool stuff similar to what we're doing here so stay tuned for that and would love to have you part of that journey as well when you get those notes it'll say that you're interested so you'll get an announcement whenever that course goes live thank you for watching be sure to subscribe stay tuned for the next episode peace out